Hey guys, this is Joe Metalone, and today we're going to take a look at promises in AngularJS. Uh, so I've got a basic HTML page here. I'm going to wire it up with an app. Uh, as per usual, it's called app. And we'll go ahead and script that up right here. Oops. Angular up to module app. And we're not going to inject anything into that. I'm going to create a controller really quick here. And as per the usual, it'll be called the controller. All right, into that, we're going to go ahead and inject scope. And uh, dollar Q, which is, uh, so dollar Q is a subset of a library called Q by, uh, I believe the name is Chris Kowal. Uh, it's a wonderful library uh, for uh, uh, working with promises. And uh, like I said, Q, dollar Q is a subset of that. I highly recommend you go out and check out the Q library. Uh, I think I think you'll have a better understanding of what's going on here. Uh, but for right now, we're going to focus on dollar Q. And like I said, it is a subset of Q, so it doesn't include everything that Q includes. Uh, but moving on, uh, so here's our controller function, which means scope and Q. Okay. So the basic structure of a promise is, uh, so we're going to create a really quick little silly, nothing special function. Uh, whoops, function. Uh, so it's called add one, it's going to take in a number, and the idea is to return, <coughs> excuse me, that number plus one. Uh, and the way that we turn this function into a promise is, uh, so let's say var q equals dollar q dot defer. And then at the end of this, what we end up wanting to return is the q.promise. Okay, so in here, uh, we can apply three different things to that promise. The first one is a resolve, which is, uh, I'll say, you know, like an affirmative response. It's here's, you know, here's your results, no problem. The second one is reject, which means there was an error. So that's our error handling. And the third one is notify or notification. Uh, which I'm going to skip for right now. I don't know if it's something they're still working on or not. Uh, I haven't had the best results with Notify, so I'm going to skip that one for now. I'm going to focus on the two main ones that have been in Angular longer, and the Notify one, I believe, is new to 1.2. Uh, so uh, let's do a little handling here. So if Angular dot is number or num, so if it's a number, we want to return our resolve, otherwise we want to return our reject. Uh, so the way we do that is just q.resolve, and here we're just saying num plus one. And then down here on our reject, uh, q.reject, uh, we will just return not a number. Okay, uh, and sorry, this should be return. Okay, so there's our promise function. Now, uh, the way we interact with that is, uh, so let's set up an initial value, uh, scope dot my value equals zero, and let's set up uh, some HTML here so we can actually see this in action. Uh, so controller, controller, and for now we'll just output my value. And so right now, if we load that up, we should get a nice big zero. Let me zoom this in nice and big. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is, so let's say scope.promise uh, equals uh, scope, man, I am not typing well today, add one, and then we'll just pass in my value. <clears throat> so now uh, the way a promise works is now, now we can basically say, okay, scope.promise and uh, and then we can append onto that a then. So then, uh, basically, hey, when you're done with the promise, come back and give me something. Uh, and I'm gonna break this up so that you can see. So the first thing that we can use is the uh, resolve. So this is our, our affirmative, our positive, our good result, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, what we're gonna do here is just say, my value equals the new value. Uh, the second one, the second callback, basically, is the reject. So error, and we'll say my uh, my value equals error. So now when I run this, I think I think we're good to go. Let's give this a shot. So we get a one. Okay, because we we basically added one to it, and then when we were done, we came back and said uh, we're good to go. Now if I had passed in a 
string instead of a uh, integer, I get not a number back. Okay, awesome. So now uh, one cool thing about promises is we can we can chain these together. So technically, let's see, I'll just take this and I'll chain that on again, and I think that'll work. No, it didn't work. Why didn't that work? Uh, then then. Uh, so the reason this didn't work is because we're not returning anything. Uh, so in this case, we would have to say return v and return oops, return the error, and it's basically returning it uh, as these values to the next then. Uh, so let's try that out really quick. And so we got back our not a number, and if we change this back to a integer, uh, we get back a one. Uh, so cool, awesome. Now. Uh, let's say what we want to do here is return scope.add1 to that new value. So we want to do it again. Uh, and we could, uh, yeah, so that's cool. Let's try that out really quick. We get a 2 because we basically, we did it here and then we did it here. Uh, but now you can see that if we want to keep doing this, it looks like, man, we got to keep having these, uh, these, uh, let me break this out really quick these you know we've got the same pattern over and over and over with the error and technically like I said before we could have the notify here uh, but a really neat thing about uh, promises and angular is we don't have to do that and let me just trim this down and let's do this a bunch of times and then at the end we'll do this and what's cool here so let's check this out so we should get back what one two three four five there's our five, okay. Uh, and if we pass in an error at the very beginning, we still get our error and it's evaluated at the very end. Uh, so that's cool. We didn't have to do that a bunch of times. Uh, and just to test that out, let's throw it right in here. And we can see we still get our error, even though, uh, you know, one quick way that we could actually see this in action is let's set up a, uh, here, let's set up a, uh, Let's see, scope.step equals zero. And then each time we call the add one, let's increment that. So scope.step plus plus, and then we'll output that up here. Uh, step. Okay, so <clears throat> let's do that uh, one time with success. And you know what else we're gonna do? We're gonna set a timeout on this. Uh, so timeout. And we'll say every second. That way, we should see the step incrementing each time, uh, and it should take one second for the for the num value for for scoped up my value to increment, uh, just so we can see something happening. So when this gets to the fifth step, we'll get our promise back. So there's our promise of five right there. Uh, now, if we inject a string right here, like I said, uh, the error handling will fire right there, even though we don't have an error handler in this function. So let's refresh that. And we get to our third step. And uh, I'm sorry, we got to our fourth step. By the time we got to our fourth step, we got not a number because that's what we passed in. Uh, so there you go. I mean, that's a really quick look at promises. I hope that made sense for you guys. Uh, once it, once you start messing with it, it's really easy. Again, you know, the basic structure is uh, if I strip out everything else that we did here and uh, <clears throat> get rid of this timeout, you can see, you know, we've got this very simple uh, error handling built into it uh, be, with the resolve and the reject. And then we just return the promise. And uh, when we get down here, we're, we're good to go. I mean, let's uh, walk through one more, whoops, quick functioning version. I think that's functioning. And uh, we got our five right back. That's so obviously that's without the steps. Uh, nice and easy, no problem. You can chain it all together, which helps. And you don't have to write error handling at each step. Uh, so that's a quick look at promises in AngularJS. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good one.